Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make selections using channels in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is really cool. It's especially gonna apply to those of you guys who, out there who are doing some design on your computer. I'm gonna show you how to make selections using channels in Photoshop. Now, channels are a great way to make very accurate selections. We're gonna take those selections and apply them to solid color adjustment layers. Then we're gonna show you the amazing possibilities Photoshop has to offer with just a couple selections and some solid color adjustment layers. Cool, so here's our image for today. We have a really cool illustration of a wolf. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see all the detail that's in this illustration. And it, it's such a cool illustration. We got it from fotolia.com. And because this illustration is so detailed, you can see here in the eyes and, and things like that, we've got all these little hashtags and things like, <laughs> hashtags, I've been using Instagram too much, just little hash marks, things like that for the illustration. I wanna make sure that I can capture all that detail very, very well. Now, there are a bunch of ways to make selections in Photoshop, and if you're comfortable using those methods, this is just going to add on top of that. So channels, when you think about channels, just think about this. Channels are just a very great way to make accurate selections in Photoshop. So how do we actually use channels to make selections? Well, let's go ahead and show you how to do it. So to get to your channels, by default, you're gonna see I've got layers, paths, and channels here. Now, if you don't see channels, just go to Window, and then down here to Channels. Make sure that's turned on. So now that we're in our channels dialog, we're gonna click on RGB, and I'm gonna click on my red channel, green channel, and our blue channel. Now you can see we start off with a black and white image. So in this case, we're just using channels to make selections, okay? So it really doesn't matter what color channel I choose as of this point, because we're just using them to make a selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my blue channel and duplicate that. All right, so click on our blue channel, and I'm gonna drag it down here to the new channel icon. So now we have a blue copy. Okay, what we wanna do now is I wanna turn this channel into a selection. To do that, it's really, really simple. All I have to do is hold down Control or Command and click right here on the thumbnail to my channel. Now, what's gonna happen here, you're gonna see, let's just zoom in so you can see all these little, they're called like marching ants, right? The things that let you know something's selected. You're gonna see those all over your image. Now, how channels work, whenever you select a channel, it's only gonna select the lighter areas. The dark areas do not get selected. The other cool thing about channels is it's not 100% on or off. Even grayscale gets selected. So we're gonna show you how to take this selection and then apply it back to our layers in a way that's going to keep all the detail of the original layer. All right, so now we can see we have a selection. We're still looking at our channels. Well, let's go ahead and go back to our layers. Because the cool thing about selections is it doesn't matter if you create a selection here in your channels, you can still use it here with your layers. Now, right now, let's just go ahead and create a new layer. I wanna see what's selected right now. All right, so let's just grab our brush tool. I'll choose a, a nice yellow color, why not? Um, and I'm just gonna start painting around my image to see what's selected. And we can see what's actually selected is our background, it's the lighter areas, and that makes sense because when we choose to select from channels, the lighter areas get selected and the darker areas do not get selected. So what happens if you want the inverse of that? What if you want the dark areas selected? It's not that difficult to do. Let's just undo that. I'm gonna go up here to select and then down here to inverse. So now just the wolf is selected. So just as an example, if I paint with the yellow brush now, we're gonna see that I am in fact painting on the wolf. So if you need the dark areas selected as your final point, just make sure to inverse your selection. Now that we have our selection active, it's time to start working with that selection to create something we can actually use. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a solid color adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers, right down here to solid color, and we're just gonna go ahead and click on something like this. It, it really doesn't matter at this point which color we choose. Now, here's what's gonna happen. Let's go ahead and make our background invisible. So you know what, we just delete our background. We don't need it right now, okay? What happens now, if I zoom in, we can see this just the area that we had selected 
is now filled with this color. And you can see, because I had the selection active when I made the color fill adjustment layer, it automatically loads that selection into my layer mask. So I'll hold Alt or Option, click on my layer mask, and you can see this is what the layer mask looks like. And the detail is astonishing. It's, it's the best way to capture detail when you're making a selection. All right, let's go ahead and Alt or Option click on that as, again. Okay, so what do we have now? We have a solid color adjustment layer with a layer mask on it, and basically we have a huge amount of possibilities. So now we're gonna start playing around and really turn this into something cool. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is adjust my crop a little bit. So I'm gonna hit C for my crop tool. I'm gonna go over here to where it says ratio and I'm gonna go to one to one square because I actually want this to be a square crop. All right, so let's go ahead and crop this out a little bit so we've got some space there and hit enter. Okay, so now our options are really, really expanded. Let's go ahead and create another solid color adjustment layer. And this time we're gonna go ahead and choose, let's just choose a lighter color here. I'm gonna put this beneath my wolf. Now what's really cool, because we use channels to make the selection, we're just working with layer masks now. So if I decide to change this color, I can do so. Let's go ahead and make it dark, maybe make it, yeah, like a blue-green. That looks really, really cool. So I can change this color really easily just by double-clicking here and changing my color on the solid fill adjustment layer. We can do the same thing with our background. If I wanted our background, let's say we wanted it to be a little bit lighter, we get something like that. That looks really cool as well. And because we use the channels, all we're working with here is a color fill adjustment layer with a layer mask on it that's transparent so we can see the background through. All right, let's go ahead and take this up a notch. Now, because my wolf has transparency, I can do a lot of really cool things with it that I couldn't do if we just had like a flattened JPEG. For instance, I can duplicate this. Let's hit Command J to go ahead and duplicate our color fill layer. And this time, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just make this version a little bit darker. And I'm gonna use my move tool to go to the left and up a couple spaces. So what we have now are two different copies of our wolves. One is this like very dark green and one is this lighter green. So we're getting a little bit kind of like a screen print effect here just by duplicating them. Now I could just use my move tool and put this wherever we wanted and you can see they overlap in a really cool way. But I think that's, that's pretty much what I want. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and grab a solid color adjustment layer underneath here. We're gonna do something actually, this is gonna be really, really cool. All right, let's go to our blues, a really nice light blue here. And then on this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our gradient tool. We're gonna grab a linear gradient and I'm gonna choose my foreground to transparent. All right, now on this layer mask, I'm gonna go ahead and paint from the top down, just like this. There we go. So what I did just to kind of sum that up is I have this background color already I went ahead and created another solid fill color above this, which is this blue color here. And then I made my layer mask look like this. So it's, a, it's an even gradient from the top to the bottom. Now, why would I do this? Well, here's why. Because now I can choose the top color and the bottom color totally separate col separately. So if I go ahead and click on this color, we can see that I can have like a, basically like a very live active preview of what color we're going to be using. That looks pretty good. Let's double click on here. And now I can start to change the bottom color as well to get something that really does match quite well. And you can see, for those of you guys who are interested in like graphic design and things like that, this should open up a huge level of possibility because you're seeing now what I'm doing is just controlling the color of these designs and I can control each of these separately on different layers, which really does expand my possibilities. All right, so we're almost done with our image. We're just gonna add one more detail that's gonna really bring this image together. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer here, the color fill with the wolf on it. Now, like we said before, guys, these are just, it's a layer with some transparent pixels and some non-transparent pixels. So we can see, we can see right through it. All right, let's go ahead and make our color here white. I'm gonna double click on our color and I'm gonna bring my color to white. All right, that looks really cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down below my other two layers. So we have a little bit of white. It's just so cool how much you can play with this. You, this totally looks like an offset printing. Yeah, actually that, it, it looks awesome just like that. Just playing around. All right, but in this case, I actually wanna make it, I'm gonna duplicate that again. 
I didn't know that I was gonna like that white right around there, but I do. So I'm gonna duplicate this again, and now I'm gonna hit Controller Command T, which is our transform dialog. I'm gonna click on the chain link between the width and the height, and we're gonna start scaling this up. There we go. So scaling it up to a point where we see the design throughout the entire image. And now, because we can see through it, right? We can see the, the blue here and the green up there. I'm just gonna start lowering our opacity so we get like a very subtle effect that still brings everything together. There we go. That looks really cool. And you know what? Yeah, this, this I like, but I don't like it to be that dark. So let's go ahead and lighten this up a little bit and maybe we'll pull it towards the blue side. Very, very cool. And if I wanted to, I suppose I could do something like this. Um, <laughs> I am literally just playing around right now. I'm gonna put a layer mask on this and see if I can just fade this from transparent to not. So now we just have this visible on the top, which is kind of cool too. So basically I just loaded this layer, I put it in a group and used a layer mask, not unlike the layer masks I use here with a gradient tool. And now this is just visible at the top, which is very, very cool. So let's go ahead and hit full screen, zoom into our image. There we go. So we can see how many different layers we have of our wolf, which if you remember, just started off as a black and white image. And we were able to create all this just by using channels and selections to pull out that graphic and load it into a couple solid color adjustment layers. What a cool image and a very, very simple process. So if you wanna do this on your own, you got a couple simple steps. First, go to your channels panel. Go ahead and duplicate a channel and then use control or command to click on the thumbnail of your channel. That's gonna make the lights into a selection and not select out the darks. Now, if you want the inverse of that, just go up to select and then down to inverse. Once you have your selection, it's time to load it into a layer mask. Now, in this case, we use solid color adjustment layers because I was able to change that color after the fact. And working in this graphic design type image, it's a very nice tool to have. Next, you'll wanna duplicate those layers and start having some fun. In this case, you can see the wolf actually has three different layers. We have a green, we have this dark green at the top, the white, and then we even brought a larger scaled white in the back that we lowered the opacity. We even brought a gradient into the background and because we could see through the wolf, it's displayed in the pattern of our image. So you can see how much you can do in a short period of time using channels. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I love it when you hang out with me and learn some Photoshop. If you'd like to hang out with me and you'd like to do more of that, just click on your screen right now. There's a subscribe button. We're gonna send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, please leave it right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll flirt you later. It's great to have you as a part of the family. <laughs> Dang it, I was so good until the outro. All right, I'll see you guys later. Nailed it. Up until the outro. Gosh, all this pressure on me all the time. That's why this cup is filled with solid crack cocaine. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing in this cup.